Just tell us what it was you saw. Well, just starting to close up for the night, I guess, and uh, all of a sudden these bright lights just seem to come out of nowhere. Man, it's moving fast. Martha's this is VW's clever ad for their Golf Turbo Diesel, promising a fantastic 891 miles on every tank. Yeah, this kind of little symbol, kind of like a W. A, like a V, W. It sounds tempting, but we hear nothing about the big diesel drawback. For years, they've been short on an important driving ingredient, fun. But are the latest diesels any better? Is it now possible to save money and have a decent drive at the same time? We've tested a whole range of diesels from right across the market to find out whether the dreaded D-badge now also stands for desirable. The first point is that there's no point buying a diesel without a turbocharger. They're so slow, they might as well date from the dawn of motoring. For drivability, you need a turbo. And then there are turbos and turbos. The one in this Mondeo is a typical diesel job. It only comes in at about 2,000 revs or so and is all out of puff shortly afterwards. It can leave you embarrassed if you're caught off boost entering a roundabout and manically flailing with the gear lever if you're trying to pass a truck. It's a good car punished by its lousy engine. But at least it's an improvement on the old Mondeo diesel, a car that left even hard-nosed fleet managers not amused. We had a mixed reaction from our drivers on the, uh, on the turbo diesels. Uh, motorway driving was uh, seemed to be uh, giving excellent performance. The disappointing area was in town driving, where the drivers felt that they were very slow off the mark, particularly pulling out of busy roundabouts and road junctions. I think it was perceived in the driver's eyes of being a, a downgrading in their company vehicle status. Um, and we now have a lot of happier drivers on the fleet. Now we switch back to petrol. So, what's the answer? BMW think they know. They make sporting diesels, and this is the latest. The two-and-a-half-litre, six-cylinder, turbocharged and intercooled version of the car the pundits call the best in the world, the new 5 Series. And it feels good. It makes the nicest noise of any diesel anywhere and positively encourages you to rev it hard. Just a perfect day. But give the big BM what it craves and you'll be lucky to get 30 to the gallon. Much the same as the petrol version which costs £1,750 less. In this country where petrol and diesel cost the same, you'd never recoup the premium. You'd have to be mad to buy one or rich. Citroen's big diesels have long been rated, and the XM now gets extra valves and balancer shafts to make it fast and smooth. It's immensely comfortable, relatively economical, and for a car hardly anybody buys, it's very good. But the XM is one of the fastest depreciating executive cars there is. So what's the point? You'll be saving a few quid on fuel and chucking away thousands when you come to trade it in. It'll be well worth hunting out second-hand but we can't recommend it here. Maybe Peugeot's 406 makes more sense. Its muscular 2.1-litre engine has won it no less an accolade than Caravan Club Tow Car of the Year. And at 1,200 quid extra and 40 to the gallon, it'll pay you back, eventually. But Peugeot's medium-sized diesels are no longer top of the heap. In order to make brisk and reasonably refined progress, you've got to keep the engine spinning between 2,000 and 3,500 revs, though it could never be described as quiet. It's better than the Mondeo, but in our search for economical fun, we're going to have to look elsewhere. To Rover, in fact, who brought direct injection to the turbo diesel. Fuel goes into the cylinders directly. Hardly a revolution, you might think, but put your foot down and there's loads more oomph. This 200 STI has 105 horsepower, handles OK, and gives 48 to the gallon. But there is some increased engine noise and baby-sized back seats. And Rover aren't the only people in the direct injection diesel business. Volkswagen and Audi use the same technology to power a range of highly acceptable diesels. Like this Golf TDI, which does everything the Rover does, only it's got more room and it's £700 cheaper. For something a bit more up-to-date, Audi's A3, due here in diesel form next year, will add more refinement. And VW's excellent new Passat throws in true, family-sized practicality. 
For us, the pick of the bunch is that solicitor's special, the Audi A4. With its 110 horsepower engine, it's a car you can look forward to driving in the morning. But it'll use less fuel than a Citroen 2CV. It's a strong performer, and the bonnet is rubber sealed to keep out the din. It has the usual A4 hang ups, oversensitive brakes, and slightly stodgy handling, but we got 45 to the gallon when the petrol only manages 30. We reckon you'll be quids in and pleased you bought it after 40,000 miles. But before you go and get carried away with all this, a word of warning. Car cost gurus, CAP, say diesels often require more frequent and more costly servicing, and that in future only the very best will depreciate slower than a petrol car. So do your sums very carefully. So the moral of the story is these diesels don't automatically make sense, and the ones that are a good drive are few and far between. So, before committing yourself to years of drudgery, take a long test drive and give your intended a damn good thrashing.